I'd like to thank you all for, uh, for coming to this afternoon session. Um, we're uh, really pleased to see that marketing as a topic attracts so much interest. Um, we're especially pleased to have our speaker with us today. Um, he has a very busy schedule. We were very lucky uh, to get him um, to do this seminar this afternoon, and he's also going to be our, our keynote speaker uh, tomorrow. Uh, I worked 40 years in IT with computers, and I retired seven years ago, and in that time I've become an absolute dinosaur. I have no idea what this new web technology stuff is. I don't really know what Twitter's all about or why I should like things or tweet things or any of that. And, but these days, when we think about marketing, those new technologies offer us a huge opportunity for being able to market in ways that we didn't before at much less expense than would have been involved before. Producing a video and putting it on television is just totally out of, out of our ballpark. But we now have the ability with some of these new technologies to, to be able to do things that are within our means and still have a lot of outreach. But we need to get past the dinosaur feeling that I have and that many of you, I'm sure, also suffer from. So uh, we're hoping that Patrick, or I know that Patrick is going to be able to, to help us with that. Now, Patrick, when you look at his name written down, it, it's a little intimidating. So I asked him, how do you pronounce your name? And he said, Patrick. <laughs> so we have with us Patrick, sort of like Madonna or... <laughs> Or Lovely. Lulu, or you know, one of those, the Prince. <laughs> but I'm going to take a shot at it. Our our speaker, and I'll, I'll let him introduce himself rather than get a lot of facts wrong from up here. Uh, our speaker this afternoon, we're really happy to have him, is Patrick Schwartfiger. Perfect. Got it. Good enough. I practiced that all night. <laughs> take it away, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. you. Guys, I'm, I'm going to do this from down here, if that's cool, because being up there just seems unnecessary. Um, I love how, like, two-thirds of the group is on this side of the room, and this side of the room is empty, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's always the way it goes. Uh, so, look, how, how many, I mean, he just, I thought he did a nice introduction, not about me, but about the topic. Uh, if, if we're really kind of honest with ourselves, how many of you do feel like this stuff is a little bit out of your comfort zone, or you're not really that familiar with it. Okay, so take a look around. A lot of folks, right? Uh, and by the way, that's not, that's not unusual. If any of you are curious, um, I'm 43 years old, so I got my first cell phone when I was 27. Um, I wrote my first email when I was 24, which was after I graduated from university. I uh, grew up in Canada. Any Canadians here? Yay. Nice, nice, love it. Vancouver. Uh, but I, I went to college, I went to university in Ottawa, I lived in Toronto and Calgary, so I kind of went all around. Anyway, the point is that I didn't grow up with this stuff either, okay? Uh, but I've learned it, and, and, and there's an opportunity to do this stuff, and I, I just kind of want to encourage you to kind of have, let's have an open mind. I know this stuff is a little bit uncomfortable, okay? But just give me a shot at this, uh, and we'll see if we can work our way through it a little bit, okay? All right. Um, Let's start with the bad news. <laughs> so I looked at, when I was asked, you got, I mean, most of the stuff, I, you know, my biggest client's Bloomberg, so I do a lot of Bloomberg stuff, a lot of Comcast stuff, so I'm always in front of business audiences. So when I got called to speak in front of the Square Dance Callers Association, I mean, I didn't even know this existed. Um, <laughs> truthfully, and, and, and I'll say as well, by the way, uh, and I, that, that, that is a problem. And the next slide will tell you how big of a problem it is. Um, but my, my biggest hobby as, a, as an individual is salsa dancing. I, I do a lot of salsa dancing myself. I go like twice a week, and I take private lessons as well. So that's a big part of my life. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later because I think there's some parallels. Uh, but it, when I was asked to speak at this Square Dance Callers, I was like, man, this is unbelievable. So there's like going to be 200 people who call Square I couldn't believe it. So I wanted to do some research. So I looked on Google Trends to see what the search volume is for... Square dance and square dancing. 
Now, this, this is, guys, seriously, take a look at this. This is the last 10 years, OK? Now, if you see up here, I search for square dance and square dancing, OK? See that? Square dance and square dancing. And it is just, this is the last 10 years, OK? 60% down. The search volume for these words are just in a precipitous drop. You see this? I mean, this is incredible to me. Uh, so we, we have, we got some work to do. Uh, we got some work to do. But the good news is, and this is, this is, you have to appreciate how unusual this opportunity is, we've got the whole industry right here. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding. Guys, it's the whole group. I mean, tomorrow we're going to have, you know, apparently up to 300 folks, you know, at, at, at my morning session. Um, Guys, you can turn this around. I'm not kidding. That's not just me being like, a, you know, blowing sunshine. We got the whole group. If, if all of you actually did some of the stuff we're going to talk about over the next two hours and again a little bit tomorrow morning, if you actually did that, if you actually went outside your comfort zone and said, you know, I'm going to do this thing or that thing. You don't have to do it all. Pick something that you're comfortable with. You're like, you know what? I can do that. If you all did that, across the country, and in some in Canada, there's some people here from Germany, and someone I, I think here is from Japan. If you all did that, we can make a real impact on this, okay? Um, so let, let's dig a little deeper. Actually, hang on, let me, let me. Take a guess, which state, they, Google calculates, by the way, this is free information, I'll tell you where to get it. Uh, Google calculates what percentage of the population searches for these terms in a state-by-state you know, to give you a regional idea. So what state is the highest traffic searching for square dance and square dancing? Not, it's not California. Say it, what? Wyoming, no. Arizona. No. Texas. No. Again, this is not the size of the state because they do it per capita, not North Carolina. All right, check it out. Number one, Idaho. Idaho. Look at this, number two, Massachusetts. Who would have thought? Washington State is number three, see that? Oregon, if you can't read this in the back, I'm just going to read them out. Oregon, o Oklahoma, Montana, and New Hampshire are the top, uh, whatever that is, three, six, seven. Right? Pretty interesting. Now, uh, what are the terms that are searched for the most? Let's take a look at those. Again, if you can't read it, these are the top ones. I'm just going to read it out. Square dance lyrics, square dancing, square dance M&M. That doesn't apply, right? That's not for us, okay? Uh, square dance music, that's fine. Square dance caller, that's all of you folks. Dance Times Square, that's not relevant, right? And then Square Dance Calls. It might be. It might be. There might be. There is a club in New York called Times Square. Well, then it might be that. But you guys see, you can start to see, right? There, guys, transparency is here today. Now, the inverse of that same statement is, are you ready for it? Privacy is dead. Privacy is dead. I, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but let's just put that one on the shelf. Privacy. It's dead, okay? But the good side is transparency is here. You can see what everyone's searching for. You can see it all. It's all publicly available. Okay, now what about the rising? See the, at the top, they got two categories, top and rising. See over here? The top terms and the rising. So you can click on rising. Here's the ones that are, that are rising. Square dance lessons, that's good news. People are searching for square dance lessons. Uh, square Dance Song, Union Square Dance. I don't know if that might be in San Francisco, Union Square, I don't know. Square Dance Caller, uh, time, again, Dance Times Square, Square Dance Clubs, that's good news. People are searching for clubs and Square Dance Lyrics, okay? So this is all available on Google Trends, okay? I don't know if you guys are going to write any of this stuff down. You don't have to. Uh, I'm going to give all these slides to the organizers. So I imagine one way or another they're going to find their way to, your, to you guys, so you guys can get this later, okay? Uh, but pretty interesting stuff. Now, there's one more little piece of bad news. I, I looked for, uh, in the Google keyword tool, which is also freely available, okay, uh, and I just searched for the word dance, and it would give me all the related terms to see what people are dancing, uh, what people are searching for. Pole dancing and pole dancing classes. <laughs> that's, so that's what we got, guys. <laughs> Welcome to 2014. Pole dancing. All right. But, okay, do you guys see already now, right? We've only been doing this for, you know, four minutes. We can, we can figure this stuff out, okay? We can reverse engineer this. We can figure out what people are searching for, and we can put content, right? That's essentially Google Keyword Planner. 
we, we, essentially, people today, even if you personally don't, okay, the vast majority of people today, when they're looking for something, they go to Google, right? They go to Google, and it, it's you know it started in the youngest ages, and it goes through all the different generations, right? So now the older folks are using it too, okay? And they're searching for things like square dancing in Reno, okay? Uh, so we have to have content out there for them to find, right? The, the precipitous drop, 60% down, right? Here's the simplicity of this is deceptive, okay? Nobody's talking about it because nobody's talking about it. That's it. That's it, guys. There's nothing else to it. Nobody's talking about it. You guys, now I know there's exceptions. Okay? By the way, guys is a pronoun. In my world, refers to men and women. Okay? I don't mean to be a, a guy. I say it, it happens too quick for my mind to even realize. So I don't want to offend anybody. Okay? Guys is men and women. Okay? It's exactly the same. Uh, some of you are doing stuff online. I know some of you are, and I've got proof. I'm going to show it to you in two seconds. But most of you are not. Okay? If you were, more people start talking about it. There's a direct correlation between the amount of activity people talking about a subject to the amount of content that's on the web about that subject. Right? All, we, we don't have to control what other people do. All we have to do is control what we do and just put more content out there. And there's tons of opportunities. I got some neat ideas, and there's some stuff that's already out there. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm going. That's where we're hopefully going to end up, is all of you hopefully are going to have some ideas. We're like, you know, we could do this. We could do that. Maybe we could do these two or three things. And it, it can change the whole thing. Let me say one other thing. Uh, what's the target market for this? Okay. Well, there's people who have already had children, and they're grown up now, and so now they can go back to dancing. And there's people who haven't had children yet. Okay? Uh, in the middle, it's really hard. When they've got kids, it's tricky. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's tricky. Okay? So of these two, probably the one we want the most are these young folks. That's chapter two. Let's start with chapter one. Okay? Chapter, this is the lowest hanging fruit. There's a lot of opportunity here, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But let's start with the people whose ages start with a five, six, or a seven. Okay? Uh, and, we, and there's tons of them that we can get, okay? And the, the way this works, by the way, is you can, you can target any target market you want. You might get the majority in that genre, okay? But you're going to get a few outliers, including a few young people. And then if you start catering to those people, you can expand that lower part later, okay? But just let's start with the people who are 50s, 60s, and 70s. Can we do that? Uh, it's going to be easier, and we can make a dent quicker. We have to get content out there, right? That's what this is going to be all about. What can, we, what can we create in terms of content to get it in front of those eyeballs? Uh, and there's stuff that we can do. All right. So when I first started, and this is just to give you an example, I did a podcast uh, in 2006. Anyone, just be honest when it comes to these questions, anyone not familiar with podcasting? Okay, cool. So a podcast is when uh, there's different variations, but for, say, 90% of people who podcast they record with a microphone their voice talking about some subject, and then they put that audio recording on the internet, and other people can download it. So I could be doing an interview with somebody, right? Or I could just do uh, content myself, or whatever. It might even be a recording of some musician playing, okay? And then they put that online, and they put it generally on a lot of places, but on iTunes, right? iTunes is the Apple music store, right, where you can download songs for 99 cents. Well, you can also download podcasts, and they're generally free, okay? So I didn't make any money doing this. I put us through this podcast on the iTunes music store. It was 2006. But what was the podcast about? It was about mortgages. I never imagined that there would be people searching on iTunes for mortgage stuff. It's, I mean, this is back in 2006. It just, I, I, I did it just for fun. I never told it. I didn't even tell anyone I was doing it. Uh, and I remember I recorded an introduction, and I saved it as a file, and I put it up on the iTunes Music Store. Uh, that was the introduction. And then a week later, I did my chapter one, and I recorded it. And I went to upload it, and 17 people had downloaded my introduction in the last six days. And I was like, who are these people? <laughs> I never told anyone. Turns out there's people searching for mortgages 
on iTunes. I had no idea. Uh, and after a little while, different bloggers and different things, they started talking about my recordings. Uh, I did an introduction, 15 chapters, and a conclusion. And eventually, and this is nothing in today's uh, you know, internet world, but in 2006, I had like the third most popular finance-related podcast on iTunes. That's how this whole thing started for me. It was crazy. I was like, this is insane. People are searching for stuff. Some of them are searching for square dancing. Some of them are searching for dancing, and they don't know square dancing exists. But if you have your thing called something square dancing, and they search for dancing, and it comes up, and they're like, wow, square dancing, I never thought of that. Right? They're thinking about something else. Right? So this kind of stuff, by the way, um, I have some of my books, whether you want to get one is entirely your choice. There's no sales pitch, but let me just at least explain uh, what this is. It's basically an instruction manual. There's 80 chapters uh, about all, everything we're talking about is basically in there. And the chapters are super short. They're like two, three pages long. Um, so if we're talking about something in the presentation, which is in the book, then I, this is the chapter number. You see that? 51. Just so that it's easier, you know, if you want to reference it later. Okay. And if you want one, I've got a few. All right. So here's some of the stuff that's already out there. Is, are these folks here? No, I thought for sure they would be here. So the, we're not, we don't have the entire industry, as it turns out. <laughs> All right, that's cool. So you guys need to know these resources are available. I just searched around. I know very little about your industry here, OK? I'm learning. Uh, just in the last 24 hours, I've learned a lot. But anyway, uh, this stuff is out there. So here's a website, uh, Morrison Grand Squares. And they have, look at this. They have this on their website, our marketing plan and materials. I'm going to read this if you can't read it in the back. We have, we've had so many clubs calling us and asking how we get so many students showing up for our classes and what we're doing, I've decided to put all of that on this page so anyone with the desire can have access to it. This is awesome. It's awesome. And here, here's the page. They've literally broken down everything they do to promote their clubs and their lessons, okay? Uh, it's literally step by step. So this is the type of stuff, it's already available, right? I didn't create this. You know, this is by people in your, your industry, right? Uh, something worth checking out, right? Look at this one. Uh, Square Dance Resource Net. Are they here? He'll be here. Okay. This is brilliant, guys. It's awesome, right? We all need to know it. If there's, I mean, I'm sure you already do, but there's cool stuff they've put up here. All the different calls and definitions and all sorts of stuff. Okay. So be aware of the sorts of stuff. Now let's get into Facebook. Now, okay. Let's just do another kind of come to Jesus here. <laughs> how, how, many, how many of you, like, just re basically refuse to use Facebook? All right. Okay, so it's a small, it's a small number, thank God. <laughs> I was worried that I was going to be like, I'm done. Um, <laughs> let's go for dinner. <laughs> um, so let's take a look on... We, if you hate Facebook, I get it. Okay, I get it. To be totally honest with you... I think it's a little annoying, too. But it's got a purpose, okay? And, and the, the purpose is that you can stay in touch with folks, okay? There's, there's you know, here, this is a little tangent, okay? I, I, I smoked for 20 years. I quit October 3rd, 2006, okay? Um, it, was big, it was the biggest contradiction in my life, because I'm, I'm, no, you guys don't have to, seriously, that's, that's not why, it's cool. The point is that for 10 years prior to that, okay, I had this thought in my head, smoking is the biggest contradiction of my life. It's killing me. And that thought just got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bigger, bigger. Over the course of 10 years, it, it, it increased, more prominent in my mind. And there was a threshold. And finally, it crossed that threshold. And when I finally got to that threshold, it took 10 years. But when I got there, quitting was easy. Have any of you guys gone through something like this? It could be with dieting, right, or whatever. It could be anything. This, this notion grows in your mind for a long time, right? And then finally you cross the threshold. Well, there's a lot of people on Facebook who might want to come dancing one day, but they're scared, you guys. They're intimidated. They don't think, they can't hear the music. They, they can't hear the beat. They're worried they're going to make a fool of themselves. It's going to take time. It's not a sales pitch that's just going to happen in one day. It's going to be exposure over a period of time. And that, that threshold is going to grow in their mind. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. And everyone's going to reach that threshold at a different period of time. Maybe some people are almost there right now. 
And other people, it might take three years for them to be like, you know what, I'm going to go give it a try. But we have to be conscious of that. And Facebook allows for that. Okay? It allows people to, to, to stay in front of people. So here's, uh, these are just some uh, pages on Facebook. This is a page about square dancing. If you can't see this, 16,000 people uh, like this topic. That's a nice starting number. I'm, I was happy to see that. Right? Here's another one. This is uh, Chase the Chili. <laughs> you guys... Nice. I love it, right? So th- th- these are pages that exist, okay? I'm just, one, I'm just rolling through a few just so you know it's already out there. Look at this. Uh, new Beat Callers. Are they here? People from this group? No? Um, we've got 393 people in this group. Here's another one. Uh, Square Dancing Australia. Over, almost 600 folks in Australia. This is super impressive to me. Square Dance Callers. That's you guys. Are you, how many, are you guys members of this? Some? Okay, if you're not, if you're not, get, become members, just like, like it. What happens when you like something? What happens when you like something is when they post something on this page, it's going to show up in your feed. So when you log on, you're going to see it, okay? So you're going to see the updates. That's what, I, that's what I mean when I say stay in front of people, is you're going to see these updates, okay? And here's one more. Uh, translate square dance calls for me, right? Do you guys, are you guys members of this? Now, this is just the ones that, that I found, and actually Barry sent me a bunch of these. I'm grateful to, to, to him for he really went out of his way to help me prepare for this. Uh, so seriously, kudos to him. He's awesome. Anyway, these are just uh, a few that I found, but I'm sure there's others, and I'm sure we can build more. Okay, now, when I was on this last one, I was just looking at the feed just to see what had been posted. And just by coincidence, uh, very recently, someone posted this. Dance, it's cheaper than therapy. Now, we need to talk about this. This is brilliant. Okay, there's a few reasons why this is brilliant. Number one, it's not just the text. It's an image of the text. You see that? It's an image of the text. Now, we'll talk, it's, a, it's a huge trend. Okay? People are posting quotes onto images. They're not just sharing the words. You've probably seen this. Okay? They're putting the words onto an image which relates, and not in this case, but I'll show you in two seconds. Okay? They put the words onto an image that relates to the topic, and then they share the image that has the words on it. So it looks almost like a little poster. Okay? And it, statistically, people pass that along. Right? If you just put the, with the words, no one passes it along. They just leave it alone. Okay? But if it's an image of the words, all of a sudden people share it. Okay? It's just In all this stuff, don't ask why. It doesn't matter. It's just statistically, that's what does. I study the guys. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a geek at this stuff. I'm always looking at the studies and the research, and people have studied all this stuff. And, and I have to say one more thing. You know, all of you, are all of you going to be at the session tomorrow morning? Okay. Okay, perfect. That's what I assumed. So for me, it was important to essentially take my content and divide it in two because I don't want it there to be overlap between today's session and tomorrow's session. I want there to be new things for you guys to get tomorrow morning. So I've done that. Uh, and so there's a number of things I'm going to show you. Just know that there's going to be more things tomorrow. And, and ideally, to be totally honest with you, ideally I would have preferred to do the, the, the shorter session first and then come back and do the, the longer session after. It, it, intuitively, it makes kind of more sense for me that way. But that's, the scheduling didn't allow for that, which is fine. So we're going to go through some stuff. In the, but tomorrow's session, I think you might find even more, you know, if you will, entertaining. This is a little more in-depth. It's a little more getting our hands dirty and figuring out what this stuff's all about. Tomorrow is more just about stories of what people have done and the results. And there's, there's some great stories. Okay? And you, you're going to get some ideas tomorrow. I promise you're going to get some ideas. Uh, but today we're going we're to dig in a little bit. Okay? So creating these images is brilliant. Now, the, the phrase itself, dance, is better than therapy, that's genius, too, because, number one, it's truer. Like, we all know how true that is. So I need to introduce you to Phyllis Cohen. <laughs> now, I asked her permission to do this. <laughs> she, she's a, she's a, uh, she used to be my neighbor. In a condo complex, she had the unit right below mine. Okay? Now, today, she bought a house. She's about half a mile down the road. Anyway, she's a 62, Jewish lady, just the sweetest lady you've ever met, Okay, but she's all alone, okay? Uh, and truth be told, she's uh, depressed and takes medication for it, okay? So this is, she's alone. She's lonely, okay? 
there are hundreds of thousands of people around this country who are at home and they are lonely. There's, there's probably a million or more, okay? There's tons of them. Uh, and Phil, like she's, I could tell you, there's so many stories. Like she's trying to meet people. She's, she would love to meet a man. Uh, she even dated a guy and it was just, you know, she's like a total liberal Democrat and he's like a Tea Party Republican. And we all were like, right at the beginning, we're like, this is not going to work. But of course, for, <laughs> but for her, right, a lot of people, we get into this, this, this mode where the older we get, we start thinking, you know, we got to be happy with what we can find. We lose that abundance mentality. We start thinking, okay, this person actually likes me. I got to find a way to make it work, even if it's completely the wrong situation. Like the only thing they agreed on was like the weather, okay? Like they didn't agree on anything. Uh, but anyway, the point is, like, she's really scrambling to try and find companionship in her life. You guys all know that she would be happy if she could come square dancing, right? And, and by the way, I've tried to get her to go salsa dancing, and I, had, I actually got her to go one time, but that's, it's really hard in salsa. Salsa dancing is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it is like a partner dancing, so there's a, and I'm the lead, and the woman's the follower, and there's like a very specific footwork that you've got to learn and how to do all that stuff. And she doesn't really hear the beat quite that well. It's hard for her. She struggles, right? Meanwhile, in square dancing, you can do it, right? She could do this. She could do this. So how do we get her to come square dancing? And that's, that's the... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Why don't you take her? <laughs> <laughs> that's, getting, that's getting weird, guys. I mean, look, I, I got her to go salsa dancing, okay? But I've never been, I, I truthfully, I haven't been square dancing since high school. And I know you guys hate hearing that, but it's the truth, so. Yeah. All right. I love it. I got a bunch of alpha personalities here in front of me. I knew it, too. I was like, these are callers. Like, these guys all, and by the way, questions are welcome, okay? You want to put your hand up? I, like, go to town. We have to be wary of the time, and I'll try and keep it moving. But I, I really want to get your questions answered. So if something's in your brain, let's get it out. I know you're not, I know you're not shy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, uh, Phyllis uh, is what I call a internet stalker. <laughs> okay? So stalking is not uh, acceptable in regular life, but on the internet, it's perfectly acceptable. And she's on Facebook all the time, and she sees everything. But she never comments, and she never likes. Uh, there's a lot of people like this. Maybe some of you might fall into this category, where you see everything, uh, but you don't actually comment, you don't actually do anything, okay? What if Phyllis were to see something like this? Square dance, it's cheaper than therapy. Phyllis goes to therapy every week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a part of her life, <clears throat> and she might see a photo. I just took this photo off of Google, so I don't know if any of you are in it. I think it's a great photo. Uh, the point is that there's an opportunity to share content on Facebook, and this is the kind of stuff that people are going to see, okay? And it's going to build that threshold slowly over time. And they're, because you know what? They're going, to be, they're going to see people that look a little bit like them. Those people look kind of like me, and they're having fun, and I'm home alone. Right? This, guy, this stuff is really basic, you know? Uh, so I looked online to see what kind of quotes there were on uh, dancing, and there's literally uh, websites that have quotes, and there's tons of quotes about dancing. You could do... You could make tons of these sorts of images if you wanted to. Right? I just kind of dug into it just to see what it would look like. And in fact, on the website called Pinterest, which anyone not familiar with Pinterest? It's OK if you are. OK, it's fine. I'm not gonna, you don't need to know it, okay? but it's a, it's a site where people share images. Okay? And there's tons of people doing this already. Look at this. These are all images with dancing and quotes right on the image. This is awesome stuff. right? Now, there's none of it with square dancing. I mean, I couldn't find one with a square dancing image and a quote related to it. Okay? This, this is the type of stuff, is to start getting these. This is just one example. Right? We're going to go through a bunch of these. But creating images and putting, sharing the fact that what you enjoy doing, right? what you're passionate about, this is your hobby. Right? There's visual ways to share that kind of content. This is, there's different types of content. Right? There's text, audio, photos, and video. What's the most viral of those four? Video. Video. Okay, what's in second place? Photos. Photos. Turns out, people like interacting with visual content. Why? Who cares? They just do. They just do. They like, so if you post text, it doesn't go anywhere. 
If you post an audio recording, it doesn't really go anywhere. But if you post an image, people share it. If you post a video, people share it. Statistically, that's what happens. So how can you communicate your passion? How can you communicate your hobby in a visual way? That's what we're trying to get at. Okay? And I do this stuff myself. On my own website, I have, I, every time I speak in a different city, and I, I, a big part of my business is speaking. I try to get to as many different places as I can because it builds my credibility. Okay? But, so every time I, I speak in a city, I build a page about that city, and I put a picture of it. This is Bahrain, but I don't just do the picture. I brand it. I put my photo on it and my information on it right? because I know that the image is important. Right? I do the same thing with San Francisco. And any, every city I go to, I always create these images. So I'm not, I'm not, everything, we're, everything we're talking about doing is stuff that I do myself, okay? so which is the reason I included it. Okay? So this is just so you know. There's different websites where you can download images. Buy, you, know, you can purchase images. The thing I really would love for you to do is to actually take pictures of your actual events. Uh, and encourage other people to do the same thing. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, but even if you didn't want to do that, there's tons of places where you can buy images for like 50 cents, you know, a dollar. Uh, and these are just three of the, the better known ones. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of these, but this is, I looked on, see at the top here, it says dancing couple. There's all kinds of images that are available. Yeah. Is, do you hear this? So it, now there's, there's a distinction. If you're using it for commercial purposes, all of a sudden there's a little bit, there's some stickiness. But most of the time, it's absolutely royalty free. So you can use this stuff over and over again. You can get it out there, right? And, and take the image and put a quote on it. You can share it. You can put, do whatever you like, like with it. Does that make sense? Questions? Sir? Eh, no one's going to go after you on that. Besides, you know what? I shouldn't even have said that because the truth is that most of them, the price you pay includes commercial rights. Uh, there, there was, it came to my mind because I, I was stuck in a situation once where I... Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about it. If you use those ones that I mentioned, when you get the slide deck, you'll see those. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. But I had one with Getty Images where I got in a, in a sticky situation. It was totally unintentional. I didn't even realize it. It's a picture of... Uh, San Antonio, Texas. I was like, what's the big deal? But anyway, uh, yeah, you're fine. And there was another question here somewhere as well. You okay? All right. Here's some videos that I found on YouTube. Uh, you guys have probably seen some of these. Uh, Square Dance demonstration. Square Dance Flash Mob Seattle. Has anyone watched this video? It's, it's a pretty interesting video. I was, I was surprised to see that. Uh, now, all these videos, we're gonna, I've got some examples of a couple of videos that can be leveraged better than they currently are. But getting these videos out there, like every time you have an event, you could take a short little video of one of the dances. You guys are the callers. I mean, you guys are in the perfect position, I think. I mean, I don't know the, the specifics. I know you're busy, and you, I think you probably must have to think like in turbo mode to know. Because <laughs> there's a different call, like every second and a half or something. It's un unbelievable. I, could, I don't think I could do what you guys do. I mean, in, in, in uh, salsa dancing, like, someone just made the comparison last night. Actually, it was you, Tom, I think, wasn't it? Where effectively in that scenario, like, I'm the caller for our two-person two dance because I got to decide. And it's like the matrix in my head. It's like brrr, calculations. Like, it's hard. So for, to do it with 100 people in front of you, I don't know how you do it. Uh, but the point is that uh, these videos can be leveraged. And here's, look at what this, this is something that I found. These are awesome. There's a whole bunch of uh, video square dance lessons. Lesson one, lesson two, all the way up to lesson whatever. Anyone here doing these? Is this, is it yours? You can do tons of stuff with these videos. And the, these videos are, are, are nicely optimized. It says uh, square dance lessons. That's what people are searching for. Remember at the beginning where I showed you those lists? People are searching for square dance lessons, square dance clubs. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Every one of you is in a different city, right? Now, if I was going to if I pick a city, San Antonio, okay? If I live in San Antonio and I want to go square dancing, I'm going to go to Google, and am I just going to search square dancing? No, I'm going to search square dancing San Antonio, okay? All of your content should include location-based keywords. Because intuitively, people, it's different if I was searching for like a product name, like 
you know, tires or something. Okay? It's different. That's a, it's not location-based. But square dancing is location-based. Right? So when you create a blog post or when you create any kind of content, a video on YouTube or something on Facebook, you want to get your location in there. Right? San Antonio, square dancing. Square dancing in San Antonio. Does that make sense? Square dancing lessons in San Antonio. Square dancing clubs in San Antonio. That stuff's going to rank. It's not very competitive. Like, it's not competitive at all because there's nothing, there's very little going on. So believe me, if you like, just as an example, if, if, is anyone here from San Antonio, just out of curiosity? No, go figure. All right. Uh, if I created a video and called it Square Dancing Lessons in San Antonio and put it on YouTube, let's say a week later someone went to Google and searched for Square Dance Lessons in San Antonio, my YouTube video is going to show up, I promise you. Right? You can get on the first page of, of Google really quickly by putting this type of content on the web. Does that make sense? All right. Here's one of these videos that I saw. This was, uh, Barry just sent this to me this morning. So I, I, just, I, I wanted to just look at it quickly. Now, this, this, I think this video is, is quite well done, actually. The, the production value is quite good. Uh, some of you may have your own opinion. Have, have any of you seen this video? It's quite recent. OK, a bunch of you have. So, and if the, the opinions on whether or not you like the video, that's fine. You know much more about the specific topic than me. But I was looking at the video itself, the production quality. I think it's quite nicely done. Okay? But look at how it's optimized or completely not optimized. Okay? Here's the title. This is modern pattern dancing. Is anyone searching for pattern dancing? Yeah, you're right, and I'll prove it to you because I got the stats. I checked it this morning. I'm like, this, this is ridiculous. And then in the video description, this is the description, so it would be below here, but I, I just wanted to show you. It says, to see the detailed description of modern pattern dancing, please visit our website. There's still no mention of square dancing anywhere, and there's hardly any description at all. Right? YouTube likes descriptions. Put words in there. Like all of your calls have words. Right? What, what's like, like do si do or uh, the chainsaw or something? Or cha what is it? <laughs> What, what is it? Chain reaction. Chain reaction. Yeah, whatever, guys. <laughs> Listen, cut me some slack, all right? I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. This was intentional. Why in the world? All right, so fair enough. Okay, so that's, that's, that's brilliant. This actually makes it an even better example. So if he's trying to rebrand, then that implies he's trying to go from an old brand to a new brand. Yes? Yeah. No one's searching for the new brand yet. You're searching for the old brand. So maybe you don't have to put square dancing in the title, but you darn well got to put it in the description and the tags, because otherwise it's never going to show up. It's never going to show up. If you want to put a new name to it, that's cool. I get it. I get it. Maybe like if the square dancing has like an old connotation or whatever, that's fine. I, I get it. But you gotta, you gotta give, you gotta have a bridge. You gotta have a bridge from the old to the new. They're not, no one's searching for pattern dancing, right? Now, as a comparison, because uh, Bar Barry's email this morning actually had two videos in it. This was, oh, see, look at this. Check this out. Here's square dancing, pattern dancing. <laughs> the blue is square dancing, and that's pattern dancing. You see this? Nobody's searching for pattern dancing. Put, okay, this is brilliant. So what he said is that in the video at the four-minute mark, it puts square dancing up on the screen, and that's great for the visual viewer. Okay, but does YouTube know that square dancing is on the screen? No. Maybe one day they'll have the technology to know that, but that technology doesn't exist yet. Okay. So the point is that if someone goes to YouTube and searches for square dancing, that video has no way of appearing. There's no bridge. Right? Square dancing is not in the title, it's not in the description, and it's not in the tags. So there's no way to get it. To, YouTube doesn't know. YouTube doesn't know it's about square dancing. So I, you know, I, I think it's brilliant that it references square dancing. And I'm, I mean, again, I just want to be totally clear. It's a good video. Like, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. I think whoever put this together did a nice job. I'm just saying it could be done better. These are little things. Guys, the, the world is, is all, I, want to, I really want to hear your comment. But the, the, the improvements we're talking about, we're not talking about making big things. We're talking about improving everything just a tiny bit. Right? They could have done a few more things. Like, ideally, you could have like a two or three or 400 word description right here. Right? 
talking about square dancing and how it's changing to pattern dancing and how it now you know, is including young people in both heterosexual and homosexual communities or whatever, and there's different calls in C1 and C2 and whatever all these things mean, right? Because some people are searching for C1 challenge calls. <laughs> Am I close? <laughs> okay, yeah, right. <laughs> well, Okay. I think the intent they were trying to do with this was create this as it was about the square dancing and let it go viral by itself in the video. Okay. And see if it was going to go out viral that way. If I post it online and all my community who are non square dancers pick it up and see it and spread it out that way, it creates a brand new thread that people aren't looking for on Google, yeah. but it's a new thread going out. Okay. That's so, so let, let me, I mean, I want to, whoever this person was who created this video, I want to give them total credit. And, and I, I, I'm certain they had a strategy. And I'm not invalidating their strategy. Okay. Uh, all I'm doing is, you know, I see it with my eyes, my fresh eyes. I don't know the history. Um, I don't know the history that you guys have been at these conferences every year. And I'm, you've probably talked about online stuff, you know, a bunch of times. And I don't know what they said before me. So there's a lot of these sorts of examples where I, I might be a little bit off base, but I still see opportunities to, to make incremental improvements. Right? The, the, the power of incremental improvements, right? They, they call it the aggregation of marginal gains, right? This is a whole, so there's a study about this. You know, it's a whole science of it. That, you know, aggregating a 1% improvement in 20 different areas ends up having more than a 20% increase overall. Right? There's a synergistic effect that takes place because you're improving in so many different areas that a momentum starts. So maybe my ideas might just add to some of the other ideas that you already know or you've heard in the past. Okay. So in this email, uh, there was a second video. So here's the second video. Okay. Uh, dare to square, to dare to be square west. This, I'm sure this is the name of a conference, I'm assuming. Uh, is this another video that many of you have already seen? It's a traditional square dance video. Okay, it's a traditional, and again, I don't know the history, so, you know, <laughs> give me, <laughs> stay with me, guys. <laughs> um, but the bottom line is, in my opinion, We've got a step in the right direction. At least the word square is there. Okay? But I would like it to be square dancing. I'd love to have that keyword phrase in the title. Maybe it could be square dancing, square dancing colon, dare to be square west 2013. Now you got both, right? Little things to improve it. But one thing they did do, which was very good, is the description. Look at this description. They put a whole thing in here. And there's all kinds of keywords in here, including location-based keywords and all kinds of stuff. So that you're giving, you're giving food to Google, okay? This is what Google feeds on. Google feeds on words, right? They, they love, like, visual stuff is good for humans, like what I said a second ago. We like images, we like videos, but Google likes words, right? So you put the words in the description and talk about all the different calls. Like, there's, at last night at dinner, they were telling me there's, like, 180 calls and that doesn't even include C1, C2, or whatever. It's, yeah, and, and they're like 100 each, so we're up to 380. They each have a name, right? There are people out there who are searching for those names of all these, you know, chain reaction or whatever, okay? <laughs> it, it is that, right? I got it right this time. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, chain, <laughs> it would be awesome. And I, I got some coming up here real quick, which I, I'm, I'm really hoping... I, I gave myself the option to like take a break and remove two slides that are coming up reasonably soon because I didn't know how this was going to go. So I'm like, are these friendly people? Are these guys going to cut me some slack? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, but you guys are being pretty cool, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm to do them, but I'm, I'm kind of taking a bit of a risk. But we'll get there in a second. Uh, the point is, if you're going to put a video up, put two, three, four hundred words of description with all kinds of keywords in there and it's going to come up for people who search for different stuff. Right? Just get it in there so people find it. And then, by the way, you can take that video and you can share it on Facebook. Right? You can share it on your personal profile or you can share it on the page that you're a part of if you have a page okay? or a group. Right? There's places where you can share it. Just get it out. Get content out. The more content, the more interaction, I promise. It, that, it just happens that way. Right? The more content there is, the more people are going to talk about it. All right. I want to show this example just quickly. When I, when I first launched my book, it's not visual, but it gives you, it gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Um, I, I took my book and I summarized it into 300 marketing tips, and I released those tips as tweets on Twitter. How, by the way, there's over 100 million people on Twitter today. 
You think most of those people are just wasting time? Absolutely. Absolutely. The vast majority of these people are just wasting time. But there is an opportunity. There are a couple people who are seeing results on Twitter. And when I did this, this was quite effective for me launching my book. Okay? So if you can't read this in the back, I'll just read the first one. Uh, conversations are markets. Participa- participation plus facilitation equals opportunity. More tips at and a link to my website. Right? What am I doing? I'm trying to demonstrate my expertise in the middle of the high traffic website called Twitter. And if people don't care what I've written, that's OK. It's in Twitter, it's, no one's mad about that. But if they are interested, they can click on it and learn more what's going on. Right? What tips could you write? I mean, just think about it. What tips could you? I did 300 tips. I bet you you could do 200 tips, 300 tips about square dancing and probably do it in a weekend and share it. And I'm not saying this is the only thing you do on Twitter. I'm not saying you even have to use Twitter. But you could, and it could be effective. And you share the, you share the, the tips with a link back to your website. Right? And people see it, and people come, and people visit. This ended up being 30% of my traffic when I first launched my book, which was, that was awesome for me. I mean, it was a big deal. When I launched my book, I got a lot of traffic from Twitter because I was sharing these tweets. And if you wanted to do something like this, these are three platforms that you can use. Again, when you get the slides, you'll have these. Fire away. It's a great question, guys. I will. I will. I promise. All right. So the question is, uh, get my comment on the quality of folks on Twitter and their potential value in spreading the word about square dancing. Okay. Um, you know, there's 140 million people or whatever on Twitter. Are there a lot of, you know, idiots on Twitter? Absolutely, right? Young people who could care less about anything except themselves? Absolutely. There's tons of those folks. Uh, but to say that they're all worthless with respect to spreading the word about square dancing is not a true statement. It's just not. Now, what that percentage is, I don't know. I mean, no study's ever been done to see what percentage of Twitter users are into square dancing, right? But I promise you, when you've got 140 million people, there's good people in there, too. And the beauty of Twitter is that people self-identify themselves. If you put your, like my tips, right? The people who don't care about the tips, they just let it go by. They don't even interact with it. But the people who do like it, they interact with it and they follow you. So they self-identify. That filtration process happens on its own, right? So if you put the, and this happens all over the internet. The beauty of the internet is that in order to segment the market, in order to find just your people, all you have to do is optimize your content because people are searching for stuff. Well, on iTunes, people were searching for mortgages. I had no idea, but they were. And so those people were the ones who found me. Only the ones who were searching for me found me because my stuff was optimized for mortgage, right? If you put stuff out there, whether it's Twitter or whether it's YouTube or whether it's just a blog, which is on Google, you know, the Google ranks all those things, right? Or Facebook, people are searching for stuff. So all you have to do is make sure that the words people are searching for are in your content and that the underlying content is good quality. Like it's a nice photo or it's a decent video. Now, let me just say that because some people immediately hear that and they think, oh gosh, you know, to make a video that's expensive and it's hard to do. And <laughs> listen to this, seriously. If you look too good, they think you're a model. <laughs> you have to look a little bit bad <laughs> because otherwise it's not believable, right? It's, it's not, it's, it's, I'm not kidding. If, they, if, they, if you look too good, they think it's fake, right? The, 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 go on YouTube. Right? There are companies that spend millions of dollars to make sure their video doesn't look that good. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but there's truth to it. To make it sound, you know, like it was just done, like it was just done by accident. There's, you know, companies that spend a lot of money making videos look that way, right? The biggest thing you need to make a video nice on YouTube, there's just two things, good sound quality and good lighting. That's it. 
Uh, good sound quality, those are the two things that people complain about on YouTube. doesn't matter how good you look, it's good sound quality and good lighting. And the lighting you don't need to worry about because the cameras, like the video camera on my phone, my smartphone, and most of the smartphones that you probably have as well, they're excellent. And they adjust for the lighting. And even in dark spaces, it adjusts and it makes the lighting fine. So why don't we take that one off the list entirely and just get decent sound quality. If you have decent sound quality, you're in good shape. Does that make sense? Uh, Patrick, just to interrupt a little bit, for all those of you here, this session is being recorded. So if you have comments, questions, or whatever to Patrick, please come up and take it on the mic. We'll have it on the recording. Thank you. Okay. So, so if, this is a good point. If you have a question, use the mic. Uh, but if for some reason you don't get to it or whatever, I will repeat the question as well. So we're going to recover it either way and fire away. So I just want to uh, confirm your point with a personal example of I put up a web page um, which had nothing to do with square dancing related to mortgages and the rule of 78. Now, I'm no expert on that, but I wrote a good page, and it's the third hit on Google, and there's some guy who called me up and says he wants to use it in his textbook. <laughs> I'm no expert on this, but no one else knows that. So you put it out there, the people search for it, the stuff comes, the hit rate goes up. It's the best page on my website. It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, this, this kind of, you know, let, let me just, as a, as, a, as a background, all this Internet stuff, I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. I'm just saying that it is. It just is that way. And, and there's an instinct. Most of the audiences I speak to, they're self-employed professionals, so they tend to be 40s, 50s, and 60s, for the most part. Okay? And for many of these people have this notion in their head that says, with respect to the young people, people in their 20s and 30s, one day, they're going to grow up and do it all the right way. That's not going to happen, guys. <laughs> That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to grow it up, grow up, and they're going to run the world their way, and we're either going to adjust to it or we're not. And I'm not saying that you have to. You do not have to. But that's what happens. Generation after generation after generation, people recreate the world in their own image. Right? Those young folks... You know, and there's, there's pluses and minuses. They're not bad people, right? There are probably many of you have children in that age bracket, right? And that's cool. Uh, and, and there's some amazing stuff happening. They're, the millennials, right? It's very, they are changing the world. Uh, the baby boomers, you know, many of you are baby boomers. The baby boomers are very competitive uh, and very individualistic, very siloed, uh, thinking about me, right? I'm not saying this is true for everybody, but across the generation, it's, it's very much that way. And the children of the baby boomers, which are the millennials, are, are the opposite. They, they collaborate. They think in terms of we, uh, not I. And it's, it's really interesting. Anyway, that's a different topic. But the point is, they're going to do it their own way. And this internet thing, it does... Guys, it changed my life. I mean, it's, it's my entire career is, was only possible because of the internet. In fact, the truth is that my, my career was basically kind of stagnant. It wasn't moving forward until the internet came along. And I started sharing content on the internet. First it was the, blog, or the, the podcast, then I had a blog, then I wrote a book which was first online, and then it became a book, and then I did another book, and then I did, I have a video blog. And the whole thing happened because of the internet. So there is a way to help square dancing, or maybe you have a business, or some passion of yours outside of square dancing, or even a career, as is the case with me, you can build these things on the internet. It is possible. Right? And I, I, you know, I'm a case in point for that. All right. When I first did those tips, I just want to tell you really quickly, um, I did them create content in batches. It's a lot easier. Um, I literally wrote all my tips over the course of a weekend. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're going to do something like this, uh, sit down, maybe with a couple of your friends from your local club, and have a brain, bring in some pizzas and think about stuff that you could do and create a whole bunch of content and then sandbag it, hold it back, and let it drip out once a week or whatever over a period of time, right? This is how I do it. And I, I told you just a second ago that I have a video blog. I started a video blog last March, and I'll tell you, by the way, it doubled my income, and it was almost instant. Within four months, hang on one sec. Within four months, my, my income doubled as, as what I do because of this video blog. It was astonishing. But you have a question. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is great. The question is, how do you get, to get them to read the information, you've got to get them to follow you. 
so I can post like crazy. How do I get the followers out there? Uh, They're not okay. people that are my customers now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is perfect. So um, on Twitter, it's a little bit different than it is on, on other things like Google, right? On Twitter, the only people who are going to see your tweets are people who are following you. Uh, and there's, it's actually not that hard to build up a following. Uh, particularly a local following is easy to do, and the way to do it is basically to follow people who are either in your local area or people who are in the community that you like, that you interact with already. Many of them will follow you back, and the whole cycle kind of starts. That's not to say that you're going to end up with like 50,000 followers, okay? but you don't need 50,000 followers. Uh, if you put yourself out there and start interacting, like let's say you know, you can, one of the websites that I, I forget if the logo is there or not, but it's called Twello, which I know is silly, but it's you know, the yellow pages for Twitter, so they started with TW, so it's Twello. Whatever, right? I get it. Uh, but the bottom line is you can find people. You, know, you search San Antonio. It'll show you all the people who are in San Antonio on Twitter. And you can search by, by the number of followers they have. You can search people who have square dancing in their profiles or just dancing or church or anything. I mean, you can search for anything and find people, and you interact with them, you follow them, and many of them follow you back. It's another topic. I, I mean, a lot of it's in my book and other places as well. But, I mean, is that enough to, to start with? I, I know what you're saying, but we could spend a whole day on that too. You know what I mean? Do you guys get it? I could keep you here for four days, right? Just going through, there's so much of this stuff. Uh, but anyway, all right. So let's talk about where you can post these events, okay? Uh, and this is a big one. This is, this is a big one. Because I'm assuming many of you have dances maybe once a week or once a month. I don't know how the frequency uh, you have or maybe lessons that you have over a period of time, Okay. So where can you post this? People are searching for this kind of stuff. They, and, and this is important. They might not be searching for square dancing, but they might be searching for dancing. And square dancing will show up because you have dancing in there. Or maybe they're searching for dancing lessons, and you have square dancing lessons. Right? So the, getting the content up with those keywords is going to put that stuff in front of them. So many of you are familiar with Craigslist. Right? Are you guys familiar with Craigslist? Guys, you can po- you'd be astonished at just putting something on the Craigslist calendar. You can get a few people. I'm not saying you're going to get 50 people showing up, right? But you might get three or four, right? What, what were we going to Just get one. Yeah, just get one, he says, right? Or just get a couple, right? And you do this, and you can set this up to have recurring so that it just automatically goes in every week, right? And so your event is listed, right? I've got a few of these. But here's another... Uh, platform that's, that's in the, the Bay Area and also in Los Angeles. It may not be where you are. That's fine. Every, every one of you, even small towns, there are places that post events. It might be your local chamber of commerce. It might be your local rotary club. There's all kinds of places that have online calendars, and they're looking for people to post events on them. It benefits them because if their calendar has more stuff on the calendar, then it becomes a more valuable resource for the people who visit their website. So everyone's, all the incentives are pointing in the same direction, okay? They want you to post events on these websites. And there's actually uh, even a website, it's called Full Calendar. And if you don't know this one, this is one where I recommend writing it down. The downside is it only is relevant in a few communities, okay? Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, New York, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Diego, Bay Area, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. I know that that immediately only applies to some of you. Okay, but you got to know what this thing does. It's awesome. You pay twenty bucks, nineteen ninety five, right, right up there. See the price is right here, nineteen ninety five. You pay twenty dollars, and it will take your event details and put it on like three hundred different online calendars. To me, it's the best deal in town. Uh, it'll put your event everywhere. Uh, and I, I uh, once did. You know, I used to do these kind of local workshops. I don't do those much anymore, but. I did this local workshop in San Francisco and posted it and I just as an experiment because I had a location where I could hold it for free. So I posted it on full calendar uh, and, and that was it. That's the only place I posted it and 28 people showed up. I was really impressed with it. Uh, so this is, if any of you are in one of these metro areas, write it down. It's, it's, a good, it's a good resource and it actually, this is what it looks like and you put in all your details, right, and all your description. It just walks you through it. Uh, and I recommend having three weeks notice uh, if you're going to do something like this. Any questions on these, these sorts of platforms so far? All right. This is the idea. This, and this, this is for salsa dancing because 
It, the, there just wasn't as much stuff on square dancing. But when people, this is just the search engine results page on Google if you search for square dancing in Walnut Creek. And there's tons of stuff. Salsa. What did I say? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, salsa dancing. I'm sorry. Look at that. The conversion has begun. This is crazy. Um, you want there to be a ton of listings. Right? People search for stuff you can populate. You can get stuff out there. Right? Blog posts or things on the Craigslist calendar. Craigslist ranks really well on Google uh, and, and a lot of other places where you can put the Chamber of Commerce quite often have websites that rank well on Google as well. Okay. All right. This is, one of the, this is one of the important ones. How many of you here uh, are familiar with Meetup? OK, so, so the vast majority are not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to plead with you, OK? Write it down. If you don't know about it, Meetup is a, is a gold mine. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Meetup is an online platform that's designed to help people organize offline events. Let me say that again. It's an online platform that helps people organize offline events. Right? Your square dance classes and lessons are offline events. Okay? This is the perfect bridge from technology to the real world. And it works like a charm. And I'll prove it to you. I've had personal experience with this. Uh, years ago, when I first started getting into speaking and such, uh, I joined a Toastmasters club. Uh, anyone here ever been a member of Toastmasters? OK, just a, a few, actually. Uh, Toastmasters is a pretty interesting organization. And I, I, maybe I'll attempt to almost get back to it later. But let me, let me say this right now. Rotary clubs are dying on the vine. They're not attracting any young people. And, and the average age of a Rotarian gets almost every, a year older every year. What does that mean? It means that almost no one new is joining, right? Kiwanis clubs are dying. Lions clubs are dying, right? Square dancing, I'm not going to say the word, OK? They're struggling, OK? Toastmasters continues to grow. And I'll tell you why in a second, because I, I, I've got a slide that relates directly to it. But it's very, very, it's awesome. But we'll, we'll get back to it. So I, I was a member of a Toastmasters club. And uh, I was on Meetup because I had another group. And when you, when you join as, a, as, a, as an organizer, you can have as many as three groups. So I had an open slot. So I created one for my Toastmasters club. And I, I, didn't, I didn't put Toastmasters in the title because people who are searching for Toastmasters are going to find Toastmasters' website, and we're on there too. So I didn't need to say Toastmasters. So what did I call it? I called it. Public, I called it La Miranda Public Speaking. Okay? I'm one of my, and, and I had other keywords in the description that were uh, about motivational speaking and speaker. People are searching for public speaking. Right? So I wanted to, I've already got the Toastmaster covered by the Toastmasters.org website. We're on that website already. So I wanted to get public speaking and other keywords. And La Miranda is the, the community where this club is based. So I called it La Miranda Public Speaking. Okay? This thing. I got to tell you, most Toastmasters, we, it was crazy. Like, I, I went through the whole ranks. So I was like the VP education and VP communications, and then I was president, and then I was the area governor. So for a number of years, I was very active in Toastmasters, and, and the whole time I had this meeting. And when I started, we were kind of an average club. Now, I am not taking 100% credit for what changed. Okay, there's a lot of different factors that were a part of it. But by the end of, and, and still today, this club is like the second or third biggest in the district. It's got younger people. It's vibrant. It is tons of people who get to it. And the single biggest source of new members is Meetup. Okay, people just consistently, they're looking for things on Meetup. Uh, see on the, on the uh, here's the homepage. And it, again, for people who aren't familiar with it, there's find a Meetup, start a Meetup. Those are the two options. And when you uh, find a meetup, you put something like, mo what it, no one's going to put square dancing, or not many, but people are going to put dancing, right? And you're going to come up on that. OK, this is the one that I had. Now look at this. Con uh, consumers who reach, uh, this is a, a, a commerce-related statistic, but consumers who receive email spend 83% more and order 28% more often. When you're a member of a meetup, you get emails of the events that are coming up. So on my meetup for my Toastmasters club, I, I put it on a recurring thing, so I don't have to do anything. It happens every Tuesday. 
There's an event scheduled for the Toastmasters meeting that evening, and everyone who's a member at that point in time gets an email saying, hey, there's a meetup tomorrow evening, La Mirinda Public Speaking. Okay, so the people get emails. And statistically, people, when people get emails, you're staying in front of them. Right? They're, they're, they have a higher propensity. Does this make sense? I know this stuff's a little boring, but it's, there's, there's a momentum that you can build right, with this kind of stuff. Here's, I searched for dance. Okay? See, I searched for dance up in the thing. And these are all dance-related uh, meetups in the San Francisco Bay Area. Actually, it was like Walnut Creek is like 20 miles east. But anyway, the point is that people go to meetup and they search for dance. They search for dancing. They search for dancing lessons. If you have something on there, I, I promise you, it costs like 72 bucks, $12 a month. So $72 is six months. Uh, so it's $12 a month. And if you have one up there, maybe you guys get together every Thursday evening for a dance or whatever it might be. You can put it on there recurring. And I promise you, you're going to get some people because I've lived through that myself. Okay? So you, you, do you, you actually have a meetup for your... Okay, so this is just, let me ask you a couple of questions. He says he's, he has a meetup for his beginner class. How long have you had it? To repeat, we, we did do his meetup, and we have one couple that came out of meetup, and they're in our classes right now. And how long have you been on meetup? Uh, we just got on meetup like uh, a month, less than a month before we started the class. Okay, so less than a month we got two people coming. And since no, then, have you had some more, or is this all very recent? No, because we, ne- we haven't started our next class yet. Okay, so this is brand new, and they've brand already new. got two people. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. I was going to say, uh, I've used Meetup before. I used it for about a year and a half. Uh, the only problem that I had is that we don't start classes often enough. So if we start classes, we did it three times a year. A lot of groups don't even do it that often. To pay the $12 a month when you're not able to draw, uh, that was kind of hard. We had up to 190 people signed up that was getting our emails. Wow. The other problem that we kind of had was that every time we had a beginner dance where we had a free dance, we would get 20, 30 people. They wouldn't necessarily translate into taking the lessons. And so we would see the same 20, 30 people. They would bring new people with them. But then it didn't translate into what we needed as a club. Uh, so that was one of the downsides. But, yeah, it definitely gets a promotion out there. So this is, he makes two very good, thank you very much. He makes two very good points. Uh, the first is, um, that if you're only holding events three times a year, it's not going to be worth the money. And that, that's a legitimate... I mean, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even think about that as, as, as a possibility. I assumed that you, you know, this would happen more regularly than that. Uh, but fair enough. I mean, if you're only doing this three times a year, then maybe that's not something that you need to, to take a look at. Uh, but secondly, he related to this, this, this idea that a bunch of people come for the first lesson and then uh, they just you know, they, they, they disappear. Uh, and that's an entirely separate issue. I've got a thought on that, and it's just like five minutes from now. Uh, we'll get into it, ten minutes from now. Uh, but it's not, it's, it, I don't know how to change that. Okay, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a genie. <laughs> I, I can't think of like the perfect thing that's going to, to solve that problem. But I have something that might help. Uh, and we'll get there in just, just a few seconds. But let me show you first, uh, on Meetup, uh, they did a number of studies. And again, that's the kind of stuff that I get really passionate about. So event descriptions with 400 plus words get twice the attendance. Uh, it's very, very interesting. So if you do use Meetup, don't ju- it's the same thing with YouTube. Don't just put a couple of sentences. Put a big, long description. Tell them everything. Right? And, and the idea is, this is in the internet, they, they, they always refer to this the same way. They say, long copy wins. Long copy wins. Right? Long, tons of description consistently outperforms short descriptions. And the idea, what actually ends up happening is, in, just hear, hear me out on this, the people who are interested, let me go the other way, the people who aren't interested aren't interested. They're not going to read it. We all know that. But the people who are interested will read as much as you give them. They'll read as much as you give them. Because think about it, they're doing, they're doing this search at 11 o'clock at night in their spare bedroom before they go to bed at night. This is, this is when people do these sorts of searches, right? And you have a big, long description that says, here's when, how we're, when we're going to get started. And we're, we, do, we tend to have, you know, uh, you know 10 tips, tips, tips. You see that, guys? Boom, right there. Tips, 
right? Who knew? Um, and and this, here's what people normally wear, and we're going to have a collar, and the collar's name is this, and here's that person's background, and if, you've, if you want to wear this other stuff, you can, and if you're not, then that's okay, and we usually have some food available, but it goes quickly, so get early if you want some, and there's water, and there's, and you just go on and on and on and on and on and on, and people, re- it's crazy. I, when I used to do events on Meetup, and I, I have done a lot, in the, not recently, but I used to, I used to put these, you would, seriously, you, it would just go on and on. Uh, about every detail about what we're going to do. Uh, and, and, and parking is at the back of the building, and there's a door right there. You don't have to come around to the front. Just crazy, just endless, right? Uh, the description, and you, it increases attendance. Statistically, that's, that's a fact, okay? These are just little tips, again, improving everything a tiny bit. Chew on this one. Leaders hate structure, but followers love it. Chew on that for a second. We are all leaders and followers in different areas of our lives. You go to church, you're a follower. In your family, you're a leader. At work, you might be a leader and a follower. Okay? So this is not, no judgment, we're all leaders and followers. Okay? But think of a role where you're a leader. In that role, people don't like rules and regulations. They're like, I know how to do this. I'm the leader. Don't tell me what to do. Leaders hate structure. The followers love it. Give them the, the more structure you can give them, the more they will like it. You're buying the risk out. It's the same thing with a 500-word description of your event. You're buying the risk out. They're like, they can picture it. They start putting a picture in their mind of, yeah, the parking lot's in the back, and there's a door, and they can picture the whole thing, even though they haven't even been there, and there's water available and all this ridiculous stuff. But it buys the risk out. They, they start to they start to get that picture in their mind and they get more and more comfortable with it. The same thing with structure. Do things, and the, here's where I was going to come back to the Toastmasters because Toastmasters is a classic example of an organization. That's why they're growing. They have huge structure, like crazy structure. And those of you who have been a member or know someone who's been a member, you know about that structure. Like if you want to become a competent communicator, there's like 10 speeches that you have to give and each one has a purpose and a role and a whole description on how to do it. And, and you can become like a VP of education, but if you do that, you have to do these other things. And it's an extraordinary amount of structure and people thrive on that. Right? It, people want accomplishment. They want progress in their lives. In fact, there's this whole science of happiness, which is something that I'm super passionate about personally. And they, they say that people who are happy tend to have four things in their lives. Think this is, I wasn't planning on bringing this up, but they, a sense of perceived control. People want a sense of perceived and control to be happy. Okay? A sense of perceived progress. That's the one we're talking about right here. When you provide structure, they feel like they're progressing towards something. Like the lessons that you have. We'll talk about what you can do there to give them more structure, okay? And then the third one is relationships and connection. People need relationships and connection. That's a huge thing in dance, okay? And, and the fourth thing is purpose. People want to be part of something greater than themselves. Uh, those are the four primary things. But, but uh, progress is a big, a big part of it, and Toastmasters provides this, okay? So here's, here's what, I was, what I was referring to earlier. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's going to land. And if it, if it doesn't land, it's cool, okay? But I, I got to tell you kind of how this played out for me because it was pretty wild. So I started taking salsa lessons in, uh, I went to these classes, not, not private lessons. The private lessons is very new for me. But I started going to salsa classes in year 2000, uh, which was when I moved to the Bay Area. And, you know, they teach you these patterns. So every class they teach you a pattern. And it, anyone here dance salsa? Just out of curiosity. Okay, not really. Okay, <clears throat> a little bit. That's fine. But these, these patterns can be quite complicated. And at the time you learn it, you, you remember how, how it goes, you know, and then you can do it a few times, but then you go home and, and the next day you've forgotten it already. Okay? It, it used to drive me crazy. So I came up with this whole notation system for how to write down what I had learned. Okay? And it looked like this. Okay? So th- it had... Uh, you know, because the step is one, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And then, and, and the basic step is F: forward, I in place, together, back in place, together, forward in place, together. This is her right hand, her left hand. So I had a whole notation, and I would literally write down 
So we'd learn the pattern, and then in the break, in between lesson one and lesson two, I would go to the side, and I would write it down in the clipboard and, uh, and record the whole thing. Okay? And so what, what ended up happening is it looked like this by the time I was finished. Okay? I mean, I, I would go back home and put it into the computer. So, and if you can't read all this, it's fine. It's just all the description of all the, the, the stuff that happened for me to remember the pattern. Okay? So when I was at the lessons, um, a, cu- a couple things happened. Okay? First of all, after a, little, a few months, I had like, this, this database, basically, of these patterns, but they all just looked like blocks of text, like this. And you couldn't distinguish one from the other just to look at it quickly. So like, you had to read through it to remind yourself which pattern this one was, right? And so it, it, it became impractical. So I, I came to the, 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 the point where I was like, I have to give these patterns names. And these patterns didn't have names, OK? And you were telling me that in your, as a caller, they're flow, pat, flow, flow modules. OK, so he, he referred, is that common, or is that your term? OK, so flow modules. OK, a pattern is a flow module. OK, so I had to give these flow modules names. OK, uh, the individual components was like, you know, in my case, was like a crossbody lead, an inside turn, a, 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 you know, whatever it was. OK, but, but the point was the accumulation of these into one pattern I, I had to give it a name. So I had, <laughs> I had um, this list of all these crazy names that I had from something entirely unrelated uh, much, much earlier, but I thought it was, it was perfect. So uh, I came up with these names. Like this one was, I called it the Urban Grasshopper, okay? <laughs> and then I had the Slippery Mouse and the Bobbing Thomas and the, and the Two-Headed Crab and all these bizarre names. And I just, they were random. I, I just pulled, you know, I, I just gave them these names. So... I would take these classes, and then I would sit down in the break in between, and I'd be frantically writing down what I had learned, and other guys would uh, come up to me. They were like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, well, I write this down so I, can't, so I don't forget them. And they were like, oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, can, can you give me a copy, right? And so every week, I started bringing extras, like, printed of all the ones I had at that point, and I started handing them out. Well, this thing really got crazy, and people started, like, when I was at a club or something, uh, people would come up to me and be like, oh, dude, I was doing the urban grasshopper with this girl. Right? And they were, refer- <laughs> they were referring to these patterns that I named. Like, no one named those names except for me. And they started to get known. Okay? And, <laughs> and so there was a, a, a couple um, that, that were teaching salsa, uh, uh, Juan and Ruth. Right? It doesn't matter who they were. But, and they were, I knew, I knew Ruth uh, from a group. And anyway, so I ended up working with them a little bit. This is years ago. And they don't do this anymore because now they've, things are really going well for them. And they've, I don't know why they discontinued it. But anyway, uh, they were struggling at the time. They weren't getting a lot of people going to their lessons. Or the people would come to the first couple lessons and then drop off. Wow, this sounds familiar. Last night they told me about this situation in, in your world. And I immediately thought of Ruth. And so I, I just built these slides uh, literally this morning. Um, so I told Ruth and Juan that they should put a program to... See, here's the challenge in salsa dancing. I want to know enough patterns to be able to do unique things with the girl and not repeat any move for one entire song. That's the goal for, for me and for many guys. Right? Because there's all these crazy patterns. I just want to be able to get through one song without repeating. Because when you're a newbie, all you do is you just do an outside turn, another outside turn, another outside turn. The girl's totally bored in two minutes, right? <laughs> so if you, wanna, you, know, if you don't want to look like a, like a chump, you've got to have enough patterns to keep, her, to keep her entertained for seven minutes, okay? That's just, I mean, for the women in the room, that's just what it is, okay? So it is what it is. And it's my resp- I'm the caller in that scenario, right? So I, I, I want to keep her entertained. And I told Ruth this, uh, and I was like, what you need to do is create a, a structured lesson, eight lessons, okay, where the promise of it is, by the end, you'll be able to do a full song without repeating anything, okay? And so I told her, you ought to give them these crazy names, right? So <laughs> I had week one, the two-headed crab, the slippery mouse, the urban grasshopper, the bobbing thomas, the elevator sling, Spicy clam, the rolling alligator, and the screaming rabbit. 
the names made it work. Right? The, the, the names made it work, guys, they, 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 because the people were like, they saw the program when they came there on day one, they got this program that said that in week five, they're going to learn the elevator sling, right? And they're like, what the heck is the elevator sling? And, and this whole thing with the underlying promise that by the end of the course, they're going to be able to go through an entire dance. Without repeating anything. In the heat of battle, <laughs> when you're out on the floor and you are dancing with a lady, don't you have to, I mean, look, you've got these eight things that, you, that, that, that are going to keep you from having to repeat what you're doing. Don't you have to have that on a, on a wristband? <laughs> Like, like a quarterback like a has quarterback. in the huddle, you like know, Tom Brady. in order for you to pull that off. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, at the beginning, at the beginning. But, but, but seriously, I mean, look, you know, I'm not, in, I'm not in your world. I don't know, you know, but ser- it, it worked like a charm, guys. It worked so well for them. Uh, and they had this package. They had this literature. And nobody else had it. Right? Nobody else... Ha- Here's the thing. Most people think that the opposite of happiness is sadness. I totally disagree. I think the opposite of happiness is boredom. Is it- people are bored. They're bored. People live in a boredom trance every day of their lives doing the exact same thing. And it's almost involuntary because our world perpetuates it. Television perpetuates it. Everything that goes on in our world perpetuates this... This, this psychotic zombie, you know, lifestyle. And I, I get really, you know, kind of heated about this because it, you just let your whole life just, just trickles past. You don't even notice it's happening. Uh, but if you want to get people engaged, you got to keep it fun, right? And, and those names were fun. The urban grasshopper was fun. I mean, it was, it was silly. It was absurd. It didn't mean anything. Uh, but it appealed to the young people. And, and there was this whole thing for, like, I, what happened with me in Salsa, I took lessons for like two and a half years, and then I basically dropped off the map for eight years. Uh, and and I, I, for a whole bunch of reasons, it doesn't matter, but I just stopped going. And then I started going again about three years ago. And, and now I, I've, and I, it's a bigger part of my life today. So I don't really know what happened in the middle there. Uh, but there was a time when literally people would come up, they'd be like, oh, I was doing the two-headed crab with this girl, and this happened and that happened. I was like, this is incredible. Like, they, they, they wanted to say two-headed crab because everyone was like, what's a two-headed crab, right? And they had something that they could say. They knew more than the other person, right? And, and, and they say, oh, well, the two-headed crab is when you do a hammerlock left and a hammerlock right, you know? That's a two-headed tra- Who cares, right? But, and having the program with the promise that by the end, you know, you guys get it. Yes. Okay, I have something that you just hit upon. After eight years, you came back. What made you come back to something you knew before? Yeah, I mean, this. <laughs> are you going to dive into my personal we, life? <laughs> no, no, but Is that we, what we're we have that situation. And <laughs> this, we have a lot of people that have dropped out that we would like to get back, and yeah. we want to know what would bring them back. Maybe you have a suggestion. Yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, it's, there's no, like, you know, awesome story behind this or anything, but I I just, there was one group of friends that I was kind of a part of, and, and, you know, I just kind of, they just were really, I feel like I'm being judgmental. It was, I have a little, you know, some people live in the deep end of the pool, some people live in the shallow end of the pool, okay? And the interesting thing is that the people who live in the shallow end of the pool think they're in the deep end. (laughs) And it's not true, but it's all they've ever known. And to get a shallow person into the deep end is almost impossible. It's like describing air to a fish. They have no idea what you're talking about. So, you know, my life is I have a good life, but I've also had some struggles in my life, and I think it's left me with some depth and character that some people don't have, and that's fine. They, have, they make great salespeople. They make great CEOs. They do very well in life. They're just not the sorts of people that I can be friends with. So uh, I kind of walked away from that friendship group. And they were into salsa. And so I just kind of, by default, I also moved, which contributed to it. There's a whole bunch of reasons. I kind of left. 
But the whole time I knew that I, I, I loved it. I really loved it. You know, I, and I was good at it. And I, that is not to say that I'm an advanced dancer, okay? And I'm not, and I don't pretend to be. But I have an aptitude where, like, I could, the structure of it, the, the whole, like, to me it was mathematics. Like, the whole thing, I could just, you know, the whole, I could do it. Like, even in the lessons, they would teach a pattern, and they, they have a big circle, and, and the, every, they, they do a, a tiny part of the pattern, and then everyone rotates one, and then they build on it, and everyone rotates one, and that's how they do it in salsa, in these classes. So you go to a class, and you might end up dancing with 30 women during the class because you're constantly rotating. And so I got feedback from all these different women, and again, I, I wasn't, these were basic patterns for the most part, but they, people consistently said that the way I led them through the move, it was clean and easy for them to follow. So I had this in my mind that I, I can do this. This is something that I could do. So, I mean, at the end of the day, what brought me back, it was just me kicking my own ass and saying, you've got to get back to doing this stuff. I mean, I don't have, a, you know, there, I don't have some great answer to this. But, but I'll tell you one thing, and no joke, if I had a steady stream of content in front of me on Facebook or anywhere else of other people having fun salsa dancing, I probably would have come back earlier. But I didn't have that. I didn't have these pictures. It's like Phyllis. If Phyllis had pictures of people square dancing that she sees because two of her friends go square dancing all the time, and so every Thursday night she sees these photos of her friends having fun while she was at home alone, she would go. It was staying in front of them. You know, and I didn't have that. I love it when I make jokes. I don't even realize they're funny. <laughs> Let's, you guys, we got 25 minutes, and I know we've been sitting here a long time. Probably a bunch of you have to use the restroom. Let's, let's hustle through the end of this. The, the one tomorrow I think is going to be fun. It's going to add to this in a way that might complement. But I had to divide it. I, I can't repeat everything I'm going to say tomorrow because then you guys aren't going to come. <laughs> So, so there's more stuff tomorrow, some great stories tomorrow, maybe a bit more humor tomorrow. I think I can get some laughs out of you guys. Uh, but, but for now, let, let's keep hustling. Yeah. Uh, the, the one tomorrow is uh, 9.30 to 10.30. Yeah. And tomorrow, I've got a crazy, I've got a, I've got a, I finish at 10.30, and I've got to catch the shuttle at 11, and my flight leaves at 12.20. I'm going to Orlando. So I'm, uh, tomorrow's a really tight schedule for me. But, but I, I'm really looking forward to that hour, and it's going to be a big crowd, and I think we'll have some fun. I, I really hope that you guys uh, come for that. But let, let, can we keep fin, finish this sucker up? All right. This is the law of diffusion of innovation. It's the law of diffusion of anything. You guys have seen this a million times, or at least heard about it in your life. You've got your innovators and early adopters. You've got early majority, late majority, and these are the laggards. These people, the only reason these people buy touch-tone phones is rotary phones aren't available. Okay, so, and look, this room is big enough. Some of you are laggards. Okay, let's, be, let's all be real and honest with ourselves, right? Some of us are laggards. We don't want, we don't like, who doesn't like change? You don't have to put up your hands. Some people don't like change, okay? And that's fine. But it being, just having an awareness of that is the beginning of maybe a small shift in behavior, okay? Just an awareness alone. A lot of times what I say, don't make the change. Just cultivate awareness, Cultivating awareness alone will lead to the change. But the, the tipping point, what people refer to as the tipping point, is right there. If you can get to 16 to 18%, the, the, the spread will happen on its own. This happens in anything. It could happen in your family, in your church, in your work, in your group of friends, or in your dance community. If you can get 20% of the people doing something, or 18, or 16, okay, if you can get to that point, the rest will start to come because some people are never going to come until someone else does it first. Right? So who's going to do it first? You've got to get those first people. Right? And once you get those first people, those innovators, those people who are willing to take the risk, then other people come. It's a magic number. Getting to that 16 to 18% is magic. Right? That's, that's, when, that's, when the mag that's when things really start. That's when momentum comes. Okay? All right. I want to talk a little bit about social media, the dreaded social media. So what is social media? Let me just quickly tell you. Uh, people throw around these terms, and I know it can be confusing. So 15 years ago, the, web, the Internet's just brand new. Website speaks to website visitors, and that's it. That's essentially Web 1.0, okay? So what's Web 2.0, okay? Website speaks to website visitors and allows website visitors to speak back to the website, okay? User-generated content, 
Okay, that's Web 2.0. People could upload their own content, bulletin boards, and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so what's social media? Website speaks to website visitors, allows website visitors to speak back to the website, and facilitates conversation between the users. Okay, that's what social media is. This is a linear progression. Social media is any website that allows the, the visitors to talk to each other. Facebook, YouTube, Meetup, all these websites, users communicate with users. It's a direct thing. Okay? Uh, now, let's just look. By the way, who's better at social media, men or, men or women? Bingo, women. Uh, men shout. Women interact. Right? I'm guilty. I'm a man. I shout. I just put content out. Women interact. Social media is all about interaction, right? If you want to get this to work, if you want to do some stuff on social media, I recommend getting your wife to help, okay? Uh, or who's better at social media, older folks or younger folks? Younger folks. So if you can get a female whose age starts with a two, that's, that's a great start. I'm sorry? <laughs> has to be a two-digit number, yeah. <laughs> All right. There's two relationships that I really, I just want to, there's only one slide, but this is important, okay? Uh, marketing 101. Awareness leads to interaction. Uh, rather, awareness leads to interest. Interest leads to demand, right? That's marketing 101, okay? There's another uh, relationship online, okay? Interaction leads to trust. And trust is an essential precursor to the purchase decision. Okay? So again, you have this relationship. Interaction comes first. That leads to trust. That leads to buyers. Who's a buyer in our context? People who come. Right? People who come. They show up. They, they bought. Okay? So, and and this, is, this is consistent throughout social media. The big companies are screwing this up as much as anybody else. Everybody focuses on demand and purchase. And it's the wrong place to focus. Buy our stuff. Here's a discount, pitch, 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 okay? All you need to do is focus on awareness and interaction. You'll get the others for free. Just worry about interaction and awareness, right? Get content in front and get interaction. So let's look at it. It's one thing for interaction. We're going to do a little more on this tomorrow, okay? But this is a good place to start. Now, I know you can't read this, but this is uh, the, the company is Performance Bike. This is a bicycle group. I just spoke uh, to the IBD Summit uh, three days ago in Monterey. Uh, which is the uh, Independent Bike Dealers Association. So I had a lot of content involved in that. So they have this post on Facebook, and at the end it says, do you remember your last road ride? Question mark and a great image. Okay, here's another one. Are you ready to find some good roads this weekend? Question mark and a great image. Okay, here's one more. Uh, uh, when was the last time it happened to you? Question mark and a great image. Okay, turns out, Facebook posts that end in a question mark get twice as many comments as ones that don't. I mean, this stuff is so straightforward. This guy's just making tiny adjustments, right? So you post something on Facebook with a great image, and I say put a quote on the image, like dance, it's cheaper than therapy, right? And then in the thing that you write, end it with a question. What are your thoughts? What have we missed? Have you come recently? What's your favorite call? Do you know C2? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <laughs> interaction, right? If they interact, they, they comment. What happens when people comment? They're saying yes. They're saying I'm still interested. They're saying I want to know what's behind door number two, right? Interaction. Get people to interact with you online, right? Ask a question. Little things can make a huge difference. So what's the, what's the center of your online identity? It's your blog. Who here just hates the word blog? Oh, three people. Come on. Yeah. All right. You don't have this cool. Many of you. All right. So what's a, this? It's important. Do a, what's a blog? Is was it was essentially the question. Here's the important thing. What's the difference between a website and a blog? Okay. A website is static. Okay. A blog has what's called an RSS feed. And if you don't know what that is, it doesn't matter. What, but what it allows me to do, it is allows me to subscribe to the blog. So if you have a blog and I subscribe to it and you post something on your blog, I don't have to visit your blog to see what you posted. It can get pushed to me electronically. Okay? Now, I know you're not going to start a blog and have 10,000 subscribers. 
Okay? I know that's not going to happen. Okay? But think past the obvious, right? Your Facebook profile can subscribe to your blog. Your Facebook page can subscribe to your blog. Your Twitter profile can subscribe to your blog. Your LinkedIn profile can subscribe to your blog. So what does that mean? That means you can put something in your blog and click publish, and it just goes out automatically to all those other websites. Right? So what you end up with is something that looks more like this. Right? Where your content is on Facebook, and it's on Twitter, and it's on YouTube, and it's on wherever else you want to put it, and people find it there because that's where they're spending time, and if they're interested, they come back to your blog afterwards. Right? Your blog could be where you post this stuff. You don't have to start a blog, but I, just, I have to cover it because it's so, it's so important. Tomorrow we're not even going to talk about blogs. Okay? But I have to spend just a few minutes and give you some background because, it's, guys, it's a cornerstone of what's going on today. Right? The reason blogs are so popular is because it allows for syndicated content. You can put content in one place and fan it out automatically. All these websites communicate with each other. Right? So you, what you end up with, like let's say you're super busy. Right? Most of us are busy. So just as an example, right? you, I'm not saying you, do, you have to do this, but as an example, you could write one blog post. Okay? And because you've got all these websites connected, and you only have to do it once, right? Set it up once, and then it's done. Okay? And then the posts automatically go to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. It just happens without you doing anything. You could take the, the, article, the post and publish it as an article on literally thousands of article directories if you wanted to do that. You could record the article. You could read it into a microphone and post it on iTunes. Now you have a podcast. And, of course, you just wrote it so you know something about this. You could create a video and post it on YouTube. I'm not saying you're going to do this, but if you did you would have a, a huge online identity. Like you would be everywhere, and it wouldn't actually be that hard. You know, so a lot of people think they have to write like three blog posts a week or something crazy. Don't worry about it. Just create something once every two weeks, and then put it in different places. Just get it out there. This is my blog. Uh, I get over 50% of my business from my, from my website. Uh, hello. Would it be possible to have a blog that related to the square dance class that you're teaching for eight or nine months so that the students could then subscribe to it and get all the information you post pushed out to them? Is that a feasible use of a blog? Yeah, this is absolutely. Now, good luck getting all the students to subscribe to the blog because most of them won't do it. Some of them will, but most of them won't. Okay? Could you do it? Yes. But is the whole point is like, you know, we're, do you want to switch out the battery? Okay, so we're just going to we'll do a little dance. <laughs> Dude, you, guys, you know, I, I know you guys aren't going to do all this. Okay, this is kind of like a 101. I mean, I got three hours to spend, right? I got two hours today and one hour tomorrow. And, and I'm doing it with a group of people where probably on average you're not doing much of this, right? It's, a lot of this is probably new. But there, there's value in this. Some of you have businesses. Some of you have other things that you do. Uh, there's things that you can learn. And even if you didn't want to do it yourself, you can get your son or your daughter or you can hire someone. You'd be amazed what you can get done. It, there's a lot of opportunity to do stuff like this. So I, my, my website, I get a ton of business through my website, more than half. Um, and I built my website on WordPress. WordPress is an open source platform. What does open source mean? It means it's free. It's, it doesn't cost you any money to, to create a WordPress. You have to host it, which will cost you like $5 a month uh, to host it. But the actual software is free. So uh, you know, don't, don't feel too intimidated. You can set up a website you know, easier than you think uh, to get something up on the web. Um, look at this. Just, just a couple of statistics. Just, again, these are the, the little tweaks that can make a huge difference. Blog posts formatted as lists get twice as many, as many links from other websites. What does that mean? The top five questions to ask, the eight mistakes people make, uh, the, the, the eight lessons of our square dance class, right? All those, any lists, people love lists, okay? If you add an image, you get three times as many links on average. People study hundreds of thousands of websites and look at the correlations, right? If you add a video, you get five times as many links. Very simple stuff. Uh, so for me, blog posts with videos are 50 times more likely to be on the first page of Google. Incredible. Uh, in, embedding a video on your website makes a huge difference. So for me, I did a video blog, which I told you about before, 
and I post these one a week, and immediately the rankings on my website improved, which is one of the reasons why I get more business, is because I show up more. Uh, it's just WordPress. I just post them on YouTube. What, what program do I use for my video blog? I just create videos using a camera almost exactly like this one. Uh, and I, I bring them in. Oh, yeah, like what video editing software? Um, there's lots of video editing software, but the one that comes for free with, um, with Windows is called Movie Maker. It's very basic. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but I use that one, and it works just fine. Uh, so you, then there's lots of options to, to do stuff like that. So you don't need to buy expensive software. Okay? Um, blog posts with images get 94% more traffic. Incredible. Put images on immediately, you're going to get twice as much traffic on average. So encourage people to take f photos in your dance class. Or maybe it's you who's doing it. Right? Whether it's a class or whether it's just a dance. Get people to take video. Get people to take photos. So those photos are gold. Selfies. <laughs> Selfies. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that feasible? Or are there people at the dance who are like, I don't want to be in a photo? They, they do take pictures. And do they share these pictures? A little bit? Could they do it more? I mean, get, just get it out there. Like, it, 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 make an announcement before the dance or at the end. I don't know how, you know, the one, if you guys make announcements, I don't know. But encourage people. We want to get the word out. Please share photos. Right? Please share things with your, with your friends on Facebook or whatever. This is pretty interesting, too. Just, I just threw it in there. For, they studied 20,000 different keyword phrases. Uh, and it, on average, the top 10 ranked pages on Google were 2,000 words in length. So the more content, the better. Now, you write long content, you rank better. So this is, this is a, a blogging checklist. Again, you don't need to... You know, these are little things. You can reverse engineer it. right? You, we know what works. So if you ever wanted to do something like that, just follow the checklist, and you've got to wait. You're ahead of like 90% of the other people trying to do it uh, just by making sure you include a, a picture and include a video and make sure it's a long post and include some lists. You know, that's the kind of stuff uh, that can go a long way. All right. Um, I'm not going to do this slide because I, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's uh, relevant. All all right, so here's what's, what's changing, okay? And this is, this is the, we're, we're closing up, okay? And we'll have a little bit of time for questions. Tomorrow, we got, I, got some, I got some great stories, actually. I can't, I can't wait to share some of those. But, but what's changing, okay? Um, and you can look back like a 1,000 years, okay? People have always looked at the source of information first and then the content, okay? So just hear me out on this. Um, uh, Oh, it was on the evening news? Okay, it must be important. Okay. Or, uh, oh, you went to Harvard? Okay, I'll trust you. Or it's in the New York Times? It must be true. Okay, or, or whatever. Wall Street Journal. Okay, I don't, care about the, I don't care about the politics. Okay, seriously, I don't care about the politics. Um, believe me, politics in this country, boy. Anyway, um, it's a money game. Anyway, uh, so, so you had that, people looked at the source of information first. Where did this come from? And they evaluated that before they even looked at the content. Okay? They had to pass the, 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 the first test first before people looked at the content. That's what's changed today. Right? People are looking at the content first today. It, we've all been on Facebook, or most of us have, where we've seen a video or a photo on Facebook, and we see the content before we know who created it. Okay? Guys, that is a like, massive change. It's like a wholesale cultural shift in our society. Uh, it's really interesting to watch. So that means that anyone who creates good quality content, including you and including people who take pictures at your dances, that, that content is as valid as any other potential source of content if the content is good. So if they take the picture and they bring it into Photoshop first and put a, a nice quote on it, Right? That's as valid as something that was created by you know, Martha Stewart or something. Right? I mean, Oprah, whatever. Like they create, it doesn't have to come from them anymore. So, you, so our, our world, our, our economy is full of examples these days of like virtual nobodies that come up, they come up out of nowhere and they end up competing against established industry giants and winning. They're winning. These brand new newcomers are coming in and winning against industry giants because people are looking at the content first. They're not asking who created it. And it, seriously, the politics, I get the you know, 
I totally, I grew up in Canada, and the politics down here is pretty hardcore. But the bottom line is, that's how this guy won. And, and if you like him or hate him, that's your business. I don't care. It doesn't even affect this. The bottom line is, he was nobody. He was nobody. He was a community organizer. Are you kidding? He was nobody. And in six years, he went from nobody to dominating his... How is that possible? It's possible because people looked at information differently that never would have happened 40 years ago. There's no way. But it happened now. And he's not the only one in politics that's doing it. Uh, Ron Paul has got an unbelievable following, and that guy is on the fringe too, just on the opposite side. Okay? Uh, it's fascinating. And if you want another example of someone who came up out of nowhere to dominate their industry in a really short period of time, this is a pretty good example. <laughs> This kid is a child of YouTube. He, he's a child of YouTube. I mean, he had, he had no agent at the beginning. He had nothing. The guy he had nothing. Canadian kid. And ends up, I mean, unbelievable. Came up out of nowhere. So it's pretty interesting, right? Like when you think about what some of these people are doing, it ends up, the whole, my whole presentation, it just boils down to what is your content? What content can you create? And it doesn't take much. A cool image with a nice quote, a fun video. It's simple. Just those two things is the whole thing right there. It's nice images and some fun videos. And you get those online. That's the kind of stuff that you can share on social media and that has, it's got legs, right? It's got an opportunity to create an impact. And, and it, nothing you do is going to, you know, I talk to a lot of self-employed people and solo practitioners and stuff like that. And one thing they kind of all unanimously have in common is that they all want to know, like, the seven things that they need to do to be a millionaire by Thursday. You know what I mean? Like, they just, they all, like, they have this, this mentality of, like, I want it right away. Uh, you know, if I, what are the, what, what are the, what's the silver bullet that's going to make me a millionaire in, in like, two weeks? It doesn't, it's not, nothing, nothing is that way. But if you, if you get the content out there, you get it in front of those people, eventually, you know what's going to happen? People are going to show up one day and they're going to say stuff like, you know, I've seen your posts for months, and I finally decided to come. That stuff happens to me. People, I, people call me to speak in places or, you know, whatever, and they're like, you know, I've been following your video blog for months. I'm like, why didn't you think to call me months ago? But that's just the way it works, right? <laughs> because you've got to build that trust. You've got to go through that cycle. And, and over a period of time, people, they, they, their familiarity goes up, and eventually they, they cross that threshold. Remember quitting smoking? And all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? I'm going to go square dancing. Uh, so, anyway, do we have... Yeah, fire away. What's the middle one? Oh, uh, This right here? Yeah. That's delicious. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Facebook, that's a blog. Twitter, delicious. WordPress, YouTube, and LinkedIn. There's a million of them. Pinterest. And honestly, it's stupid. All this stuff, you can't keep up with it. It's a pain in the neck. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, hate, I get tired of it myself. It drives me crazy. I've got to update my slides every two weeks. I'm like, give me a break. You know, it's changing the user interface and uh, it's for the birds. But you can make money at it <laughs> and you can find people. And I've spoken in like Bangkok and Moscow and I went to Dubai three times. I mean, it's insane, the stuff that you can do. It truly is insane, completely improbable. Uh, my life is a total example of, I mean, it's insane. It's insa I'm going to Bogota next month. It's ridiculous. It's awesome, but it's crazy. All right. Um, yes, sir. They speak English, and you know it's funny. Uh, a lot of times, where I here, here's okay, here's my hack. Okay, uh, I uh, in 2007 I sent a proposal to spoke at a conference in Sweden, and they accepted me, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> couldn't believe it. I never expected them to say yes, so I ended up going over there. And when I went there, they listened to this. They told me the only reason they picked me is because I'm an American from Silicon Valley. Are you joking? <laughs> Right, there's 7 million people in that category, but, so it's nothing special here, but in Sweden, that's something special. I couldn't believe it. Think about your assets. I mean, speaking, this is an asset I never even knew I had. So then, I've got to finish this super quick. So you know what else they told me? They told me I was the only American who submitted a proposal. Holy smokes. So I, because, I mean, seriously, think it through, right? I got credibility in Sweden because I was an American from Silicon Valley. Then I got home afterwards, and I got credibility at home 
because I spoke in Sweden, right? So I was like, I'm sold. And I started sending marketing all over the planet, literally, like Kuala Lumpur and Santiago, Chile. I mean, you name it, I sent stuff, at, like USPS, okay? Uh, I sent stuff all over the place. And so my, my focus as a speaker has always been to speak in international locations because uh, in doing so, that's what built my credibility here at home, is that I've spoken in all the... I, literally, I spoke in Moscow and Bangkok and Dubai and Bahrain and all these bizarre... You know, India. I mean, I've spoken all over the place. So anyway, <laughs> there was a point to that, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, have, they usually have a booth in the back, and a, a man or a woman or whatever is in there, and they translate, and people wear headphones. It, it, guys, it's so insane. It's like I'm telling you, my life is... I, I have the best job. In the, I, I, just, I, can't even, I can't even imagine a better deal than the deal I have. I just I love... I'm not a square dance caller. But Barry was just... He just did a dance in Sweden. Square dance. I'll be a caller. Learn to square dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but he called a dance in Sweden. I couldn't believe it. I was like, so some of you travel calling dances. I think it's, I think it's genius. I love it because that's what I do in, in my life. Anyway, this kind of stuff is, is to get Phyllis there. So anyway, this is, oh yeah, you have a question. Okay. All right, so we got two minutes. I'll answer the question. By the way, I'm in no rush. I'll stay here as long as anyone wants. Yeah, yeah I will. Um, I'll stay here as long as anyone wants me to answer questions. I just know that some of you probably have places you need to go. So her question was, when I speak in all these different places, do I always speak on this topic, okay? Uh, or I do other topics. So here's, here's the, 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 I have to kind of explain something quickly. So 2007 to 2011, social media was the talk of the town, okay? It was the buzzword was social media, okay? And it took me all over the world. Like Sweden, I spoke in Sweden myself, in Finland and Portugal, all over. Um, but then in 2012, social media kind of died, okay? Uh, and, and if you go to a conference, there's general sessions and there's breakout sessions, okay? And you don't make any money speaking at breakout sessions. Uh, you only make money in general sessions. And social media was a general session topic, but in 2012-ish, it kind of moved to the breakout circuit. Very few people are hiring general session speakers to speak on social media. So all of a sudden, 2012 was a difficult year for me because all of a sudden, the demand for my primary topic was dropping, okay? or at least the amount of money people were willing to pay for it was dropping. Okay? So I had to diversify quickly. And I've, I've done, most of my education is in economics, and, and I do a lot of demographic forecasting and stuff like that. So I broadened out to, to business trends of which social media is one. And then big data is another, uh, basically technology. And a third is, is demographic shifts and demographic uh, global market analysis, which is something that I'm super that that's a huge part of my business right now is you can regionally look at different countries and look at their differences. Like, for example, the more young people you have, the more political volatility you have, right? The more old people you have, the more strain on government resources for entitlement programs across the entire world, right? You go to Germany and, and, and France, those guys mathematically are in a lot of trouble because there's a lot of old people and they have huge entitlement programs. It's mathematically, they're all going to hit the wall eventually, because they just can't afford it. So they either have to make changes or not. So, you know, and Japan, Japan is, they've got a huge problems in Japan because they have tons of older people. So anyway, I speak more, about 30% of my business is big data. Probably maybe 50% is, is, uh, is the demographic work that I do. And then uh, social media, I still love because that's basically what led to my own career moving forward. But I don't get an opportunity to talk about it as much as I used to, but... Guys, I'm super grateful that you stayed here for two hours and listened to me on this. Um, tomorrow will be fun. <laughs> and it, if any of you would like, I mean, I've got 37 books. It's, if you'd like one, I'd be thrilled for you to take it so my suitcases are lighter. <laughs> but that's up to you. And tomorrow morning, I think we've got to dance tonight, too. And I'm, I'm going to come, so I want to I learn. <laughs>